Let us now take the topic of um, again it is the same thing about localization, but uh, this is uh, I would say indoor let us say you have uh, an indoor application and uh, you are trying to um, let us say try to reach a position or a location not position a location in inside an indoor large uh, industry or a large building complex. Let us say there are multiple floors and uh, in these multiple floors there are certain designated uh, locations where there is a cafeteria, there is a library, there is a particular laboratory, okay, there is a testing uh, center things like that. So, these are designated uh, locations within uh, not only within a floor, but also within the complete uh, building. So, let us scale down this problem and just look at one floor. Okay, where such uh, locations known locations are uh, there. Plus there are also let us say office rooms and your own sitting cabins which are there and so on and so forth. This is a large building complex and therefore, someone who wants to locate you uh, will obviously have to find where you are in real time because he has just come from outside and he is trying to locate you. One way is you make a phone call and uh, you ask him where he is and he tells you I am in the third floor cafeteria. Okay. Um, often we spend time in cafeteria, right? so you may find him in a cafeteria. So, then now the question is how do you reach uh, third floor, where is the cafeteria so on and so forth. Let us also assume that there is a app for that particular building and uh, you have just entered. So, the last GPS coordinate kind of is known to you and after that you want the app to navigate you to exactly the point where this person is uh, uh, to be found. It could be a cafeteria or cabin as I said. So, this is a thing. This is one by of one uh, problem, one thing that you uh, may want to use uh, localization uh, and uh, when you say it is within a building you do not want to depend on GPS, maybe GPS is not available you want to get uh, located, you want to reach a location. Another uh, motivation could be that um, you, you are in a building and uh, you are uh, and there is a catastrophic event within the building. There is perhaps uh, a gas leak um, or there is some section of the building which is on fire or there is a certain uh, collapse of a certain section of the building and it is important for you to evacuate the building. Often there are let us say hundreds of inmates inside the building at an instant in time and these people have to vacate right they have to come out of the building at the earliest. There is so much of panic, there is so much of confusion um, and uh, sometimes there is no power and uh, you know if it is towards evening uh, if there is a short circuit there is no power. So, many issues will come. Somehow, uh, let us make one assumption that often uh, we, we have a smartphone with us and this smartphone app that is running on this system um, is able to tell us in real time how to exit the building. Given this catastrophic event, somehow the smartphone app detects that there is fire in some part of the building in a particular floor in some part of the building and gives you a safe guidance out of the building which is a nice thing right. You do not have to um, worry about any panic situation just follow the app arrows like the famous um, Google maps when you are uh, using the uh, using it for navigation inside a car. So, it should be as good as that right. So, both these applications will require um, surely you will need uh, some sort of assistance uh, from um, sort of the smartphone and the associated uh, sensors within the smartphone. I keep saying smartphone because 
smartphone when you say it is just not about making a phone call anymore, it is a full experience if you have a phone. It is also about um, the, uh, the fact that you have uh, uh, cell, a, a bunch of sensors which are associated with the phone, then there are uh, a good camera that is there, then of course good voice quality uh, and lot of editing features for text and documents and so on. It is a full experience when you have a sort of a phone with you. So, now let us explore use of these IMU sensors inertial measurement unit systems to build an application of this uh, nature right. Uh, I will make a very generic uh, application I will also give you the source code as usual and you can build applications full fledged applications on top of it. We will have to go through the critical steps in building such an IOT application. You can keep any application in your mind it could be A trying to locate a, a person inside a building, B how to come out of the building in the event of a catastrophe. Both are good applications and you can uh, design applications based on uh, these IMU systems. So, let us look at IMU based localization as an IOT application right. So, if you come to IMUs you will see that GPS is the usual problem we are not looking at uh, working with the GPS anymore and we are looking at uh, how uh, one can use these IMU sensors uh, and uh, you know sort of detect people inside a building find out where a person is uh, inside a building and so on. Then let us see what these IMU sensors are all about. When we talk about IMU sensors we refer to them as three possible uh, uh, systems which are a combination of three sensors having different principles of operation. One is an accelerometer, the other is a gyroscope and the other is a magnetometer ok. Now what are these uh, basic uh, sensors and how what is their working principle? The key is that uh, inertial measurement units IMUs as it is shown here consists of one or more of the sensors as I mentioned measuring change in kinetic kinematic sorry kinematic energy of a moving body ok. So, it is change of uh, kinematic energy um, uh, of moving bodies that is being sensed and you basically look at uh, if you leave magnetometer out for a moment uh, because it has other applications you just look at these uh, two accelerometer and gyroscope sensors. Uh, gyro essentially gives rotation rate of the body ok. So, that is the key here and accelerometer provides information about linear acceleration of the body all right. So, very clearly they have different uh, requirements and uh, if you talk about um, 3D motion of a body you need 3 axis accelerometers and you need 3 axis gyroscopes right. So essentially you when you buy when you have uh, you know have IMUs embedded in phones they will be talking about 3 axis accelerometer because we talk about 3D motion essentially. Uh, usually the axis of the gyro and the axis of the accelerometer are coinciding ok. So, you that is your starting reference point both the axis are usually together. Um, uh, normally they coincide that means example is in a 3D orthogonal uh, coordinate system uh, there are sensors to measure linear accelerations on each of these axis and rotation rate of the same axis. So, that becomes easy for you ok. So, that is the major advantage of uh, these uh, systems. Mm, but you will also have to note that um, how are these uh, sensors and how do you relate these sensors to what is embedded in your phones ok. So, for that let me take the example of this phone this is a mobile phone my mobile phone that I have in my hand and this phone uh, has let already has a accelerometer and a gyroscope embedded in it ok. This is um, a smartphone. So, when you say axis you must have 3 axis right. So, what are the 3 axis x y and z. Now, what is x axis of this phone when you physically hold it in your hand? The x axis is essentially this axis, this is the x axis. 
Now what is the y axis of the phone? The y axis is in this direction right and what is the z axis? The z axis is this in the phone okay. So you can now see that uh, idea must already be coming that if you hold this phone in your hand and move forward there will be a dominant axis which will give you some data and that data if you take and you process you should be able to find out where you are using some dead reckoning based mechanism right. Uh, when you say dead reckoning you essentially estimate the current position from a known position that is you are in some position you take that known position and estimate the uh, step length the stride length and so on and then find out the current position using the previously known position. So, that is what uh, we we norm commonly called as the uh, commonly known as the um, dead reckoning based method. So, we can use very simple dead reckoning based uh, methods to actually estimate uh, the, uh, ac the uh, current location. See the all this sounds fine but the trouble with these uh, sensors which are uh, IMU sensors these are uh, MEMS based uh, sensors inside are if you do any uh, measurement using these sensors the key that you have to keep in your mind is uh, with is uh, is with respect to these sensors is the accumulated errors okay. So this is a nightmare and there are several papers which uh, talk about how to how to come out with smart algorithms which will sort of compensate for the accumulation errors that are associated with these uh, the, the sensors. One uh, way is to see uh, one turnaround is do not do uh, you do not do integration at all with the accelerometer data that you have. Supposing you are interested in uh, estimating uh, uh, velocity and uh, distance you will have to do one integral for estimating the velocity and you have to do one more integral for estimating the final distance. Do not do integration right so is there anything else that you can do without using integration. Well that is uh, if you have to do um, finding out current position using accelerometer and using this double integral method you have no choice you have to somehow you know look for a algorithm which will sort of um, you know sort of compensates the accumulated errors. Another approach is let us say I take the raw accelerometer value and find a signature from it. That signature I will use for in a smart way and then I will estimate the uh, current location okay. One is just use the data do integral integration for distance one integration and one more sorry one integration for velocity and the other integration for a double integration for getting the distance you can do that that is one way. Other way is the other way is as I said take the raw values and do some amount of processing on them. So let us see the second approach let us observe the second approach of trying to estimate the current position. Why second approach? Because we are talking about building equivalent of a pedometer application essentially counting the number of steps accurately counting the number of steps a person takes as he enters from outside the building to inside the building and not only finding counting the steps but also estimating the distance each step is associated with. Depending on your height uh, uh, your the step stride length can change right. So some people um, have small strides some people have large strides and all that. They say variation of stride length uh, can be as much as 40 percent. So, where is your trouble now? Not in double integration but your trouble now is this 40 percent variation of stride length. So, it is not that you are free from uh, this burden of uh, finding out smart algorithms you are burdened with that just that the focus has shifted to uh, uh, you know finding smart algorithms for stride length if you take these raw accelerometer values. It is very simple for you even to imagine what this uh, what kind of signature will actually come from an accelerometer it is quite simple for you to imagine. Take this phone okay I said this is x right and this is y 
and this is z ok. If you hold in your hand and uh, start walking ok, you will see that this phone moves like this right, keeps moving up and down. I will try and demonstrate this uh, also to you to show you how this actually moves. It makes a very fine movement. So, if you catch hold of the z axis and look at the signature uh, coming from a z axis uh, system, uh, then z axis of the accelerometer, then there is a good possibility that uh, you may actually estimate the step length quite, quite well. So, let us see what kind of uh, result you will get if you actually walk with this phone in your hand. Now, it is again you can start imagining many things. What if I do not hold this phone in my hand, but I actually put it in my uh, breast pocket? What if I have this phone in my pant pocket on my, on my trousers? What if I am holding this phone like this and walking like this? What if I am holding uh, you know texting mode as they call holding this phone and we see many people doing this inside buildings when they are walking. They are all the time looking at WhatsApp that is they are holding the phone like this and looking up their WhatsApp messages or uh, texting or doing whatever. This is simply the texting mode. Then you have the uh, walking mode that is they hold the phone like this either in the right hand or in the left hand. So, whatever algorithm you come out you should be very clear it can be the phone can be clasped either in the right hand or in the left hand depending on whether you are a left hander or a right hander and you could be walking or you could be running right you could because in the event of fire or the gas leak or a building partial building collapse or whatever I said that you need an app to evacuate the building at the earliest. Sometimes you may have to walk briskly leading to small sort of equivalent of running almost. So, in that situation the phone uh, so then if you start imagining what is actually happening to these uh, sensors inside the x, y and z direction 3 axis accelerometer sensors what kind of signature you get it is hard to imagine right. So, you will see some funny waveforms essentially. So, we will come to that, but at the same time you have got so this, this is what I am trying to prepare you towards how to imagine what will you get if you hold the phone in your hand and start moving. So, that is uh, that is essentially the suspense towards showing you something um, something very useful. Also this is one part the other part is what if you hold this phone and for some reason you heard that there is a partial building collapse the a fire and all that you can actually be your hands and legs might shake right you can it can shake all the three axes can have a shaky waveform uh, and uh, the waveform will be ok, but then the waveform that is associated with it is because of the of shaking of the phone in your hand. So, you may have to look at algorithms to eliminate the shaking of the waveforms and so on and so forth. So, let us look at some nice uh, uh, pictures of uh, view graphs and then build a story and then start looking at what are the issues accumulated errors and if it is not accumulated errors how do you have the tough, the tough problem of uh, stride length estimation and so on and so forth. So, let me just flash my first result to you look at this uh, picture here there are three uh, axis uh, results that you see here uh, three different colors this is directly from a uh, phone ok. The z axis is shown the y axis the y and x axis are also shown this is a phone shake of all axis accelerometer data. You will see that um, there are uh, points where in in this uh, points here you will see that uh, the, this these locations here uh, there is no accelerometer there is no accelerometer data similarly here and so on which means um, for sure the person has uh, stopped moving ok. So, um, here you can see that there are peaks there is a peak here there is a trough here there is a peak here there is a trough here all three axes are showing peaks and troughs with some periods where there is nothing clearly uh, there is a person has stopped moving here. Again the person starts moving here again the person is not moving here and so on and so forth and you can see that some of them have moved away some of the axes have moved away and uh, they are uh, you know 
oscillating quite a bit all right. So, this is filtered accelerometer uh, value this is essentially uh, the 3 axis that you have uh, you can see that the z axis is the most prominent right this is clearly phone is held in the hand and a person is moving forward and you can see there is a peak there is a uh, maximum value and a minimum value call it uh, and a, a max an accelerometer max value and an a min value max min a max min and so on. Now, it is quite easy right if you take uh, from this peak to this peak that must be one single step right it must be one step and this is another step this is another step from here to here is another step. So, if you start counting the peaks you will find out the number of steps. So, let us see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 steps right very prominent z axis is telling you that there are 15 steps taken by the uh, an individual any uh, a person holding the phone perhaps in his in his or her hand ok. So, that is you can call it equivalent of a uh, texting mode. So, like this. So, this graph that you just saw is for a person holding in the hand uh, may be right hand may be left hand should not matter ok and moving forward the z is moving up down up down up down and you can see beautifully that this up down movement of the z axis is nicely captured. What you also see which is hidden from this is your problem starts now what is the stride length stride length between these two peaks that is not known. You know that there are number of peaks which is the step count step detection, but you do not know what is the stride length ok. So, let us complete this story I already mentioned to you about motion mode recognition is an important thing whether you are holding the phone in the left hand right hand I already mentioned people can hold phone in any position can be texting mode can be in swimming mode swinging mode running mode carrying phone in a bag um, walking uh, while walking over a while talking uh, over a phone uh, that means the phone is held against the ear and you can do many things for simplicity let us just group all of them into uh, not all but at least a few of them into three groups. Uh, for major part of the work one can say that it is in either texting mode that means you are holding the phone like this or you are walk you are holding the phone in your hand and you are uh, moving forward either left hand or right hand again I very very important or you are running with this phone these are three things you can add more you can add more as I said and you can look at signatures coming from these uh, IMU sensors to process them and accordingly um, you know estimate the uh, current position from known previous positions and all that. So, these are the three modes then so let us look at mode uh, detection um, essentially we are looking at humans uh, which can who can hold phone uh, who can hold the phone in any three possible uh, uh, you know orientations ok. But there are other orient possibilities, but we just limited our discussion to three possible ways by which you can hold a phone. You can hold a phone in texting mode uh, usually that is what you would do when you are doing uh, when you are looking up when you are walking and uh, checking your email and uh, whatsapp messages and uh, SMSs and all that with the risk that you may trip and fall right. So, that uh, there are many many stories. So, careful never use any of these modes when you are actually uh, uh, particularly this mode you should never use when you are walking, but anyway that is uh, reality people walk with this mode. So, let us stick to this. So, you have texting mode, swinging mode and running mode, swinging mode is holding the phone in your palm and moving forward in a basically uh, sort of marching forward. So, that is essentially your hands are swinging all the time and running is running you hold it and then uh, the elbow is bent and then you are uh, perhaps running to catch a bus or you are catching uh, trying to reach out to your nearest transport or uh, your house uh, because you have uh, some urgency 
to get in or whatever. So, these are the possible modes which you can think of I mean at the moment I mean there are many other modes, but just let us restrict to this you need to detect this mode to do that um, one easy way is to look at the gravity vector okay, which is easily available from the accelerometer. Now, if you look at texting mode the gravity vector will be very high on the z axis similarly on swinging and running mode the uh, magnitude of gravity vector will be uh, high on the uh, high means what it is high essentially means it will be 9.8 meter per second square it will be as close to 9.8 meters whichever is the highest means it is uh, in that particular mode depending on whether it is z x or y you essentially can uh, differentiate. So, essentially just look at the gravity vector find out which is the one that is closest to 9.8 meter per second square and then decide uh, that it is indeed that mode under which the phone is being held. You can capture all of that into this kind of a nice mode into a nice algorithm which I expect you to start designing on your own given some basic uh, scripts and uh, basic uh, files that we may basic uh, let us say uh, code that is available to you. Accelerometer data you have you are you need a small script to gather it from your smartphone. Filter what filter will you choose you can apply several filters right you can apply a Chebyshev filter you can apply different orders of filters you can apply a Chebyshev filter you can apply a Butterworth filter. So, you need to understand uh, you need to uh, code each one of these filters and use it for your application ok. Uh, you can try Butterworth for instance and Butterworth may work well for your uh, application and now the question will be what is the order of the filter that you may want to apply on the raw on the raw data. So, anyway so that is one bullet again so there is a lot of homework for you if you want to build these applications. So, you may have to look at what type of filter type of filter to try type of filter easiest is collect this raw accelerometer data and uh, read little bit about filters and try them in MATLAB. MATLAB will help you to apply different filters on the raw data directly. So, just I am giving you an idea, but you can try anything else you could look at any other toolbox not necessarily limited to MATLAB because MATLAB is a licensed software you need to buy a student license for yourself and try them ok. So, anyway you end up with filtered IMU data and then you do a mode recognition in what mode is the phone being held is it any one of the three that I mentioned to you and in what hand is it in which hand is it not what hand which hand right hand left hand then you estimate the step count and this hard problem stride length. I want to tell you that this is hard because it is an unsolved problem even today ok stride length this is the hard problem step count you can get very accurately, but stride length estimation is perhaps the hardest problem. So, you can try MATLAB for uh, processing as I mentioned you could also use I think open source tools like octave, octave ok try octave it may also have some I think you should try octave because it is open source you can try that and um, then you will have to estimate the stride length all right. So, in uh, all that I said uh, is already out here uh, you have raw accelerometer you have filters you have lot of noisy data you have to pass it through high pass low pass band pass filters what type of filter to choose this is an exercise for you right. Then you have to come up with human activity detection ok then you have to do uh, filtered data to detect the peak detection uh, to obtain the peaks then uh, individual peaks have to be detected then gravity vectors peak uh, above a threshold is used to detect the activity. Next is quite simple 
you do not know whether uh, you are in uh, uh, you are holding your phone in the left hand or right hand, but it is pretty straightforward for uh, texting mode. But for swinging mode um, you can uh, look at the phone on the uh, if you are holding the phone on in the left in the right hand the magnitude of acceleration uh, due to g along x axis is uh, quite high as compared to the axis uh, are high uh, to other axis and is always positive that is very important. The values that you read off essentially are positive. And, um, as far as the phone held in the left hand is concerned when in swinging mode the uh, so both are with respect to swinging mode the magnitude of acceleration due to g along x axis peaks are high compared to other axis the same as what you have seen in the right hand except that the difference is the values are now negative okay so that's the a key different uh, uh, key difference between uh, in the swinging mode right hand or left hand. Now, what is it for uh, running mode? Well, I have not put a slide on that uh, and I expect you uh, with the basic code that is available for gathering data uh, available to you, you should be able to uh, sort of find out uh, just run and collect data and uh, do a little bit of processing and find out uh, what is the way um, the method that you can adapt for detecting left hand and right hand when you are in running mode. Let us move on. Next is step detection. Once you perform peak detection algorithm and you apply the necessary threshold based analysis uh, um, to each of the peak and uh, then you consider a peak as a step. I already showed you that so I am not going to get into detail. Here I mentioned again stride length is calculated by taking the distance between the local maxima and minima of each peak. Please note this is one way this is one way right. So, I do not think you can generalize this you cannot generalize this because uh, there has been rich amount of literature around the simple the simple problem of uh, stride length it is not a simple problem this problem of uh, uh, the uh, stride length has created several papers and I will show you how much of literature is around this way. So, this is just one way of doing it please note that, but it works all right. So, here is another thing that uh, we started uh, I want to show you some results this is what is this minima maxima how do you do that stride length estimation. Let me complete that story by this nice picture here we started we in a uh, started from location A that is here you can see there is no accelerometer, uh, accelerometer values here. What is the x axis x axis you can see is time y axis is acceleration and uh, there is no acceleration means that person is stationary let us say this is the point where you got the last GPS coordinate you can use that ok just, just in, in case you are interested in hybridizing between GPS and IMU systems you can store the last known GPS here. And then let the IMUs take over you can see that the max is indicated here the min is indicated here ok there is a second min as well. So, there is there is a difference between the min uh, of 1 and min of 2 somehow you have to estimate the right minimum again you have to try this is a very important thing you have to keep trying and see which suits you most. Then person moved quite a few steps if you count the number of peaks you essentially do the number of steps that the person has taken. Then what has happened after he walked he or she walked the acceleration is 0 which means that person has reached location B then again the person has walked a few steps and he has reached this location uh, C. So, all of this is nicely captured and use this uh, minimum and maximum that you see in these peaks to estimate the stride length. So, what is a simple expression how do I code this well let us see how that goes about and you can see that stride length estimation 
you can use this simple expression you will have to again try this as a basic expression and try to uh, you know sort of uh, read up literature which I am going to point you to okay. I am going to point you to different literature on how to estimate this stride length. I mentioned to you an important point there can be an error up to 40 percent uh, there can be a change of stride length can be up to variation can be up to 40 percent and therefore, it is perhaps even harder than the uh, integration errors that uh, are associated with the estimation of uh, uh, velocity and uh, distance. So, it can be even harder than that, but in any case here is a simple expression this is um, coming from an expression called the Weinberg expression we will look up that paper and I will explain we will see look up that uh, paper and understand it better. Uh, k is a constant derived based on observation that means, if it is me there is a certain k value if it is you perhaps there is another k value and this k is typically less than or equal to 1 which means it is some sort of a fraction um, and you can have 0 0.4, 0 0.6 I do not know whatever and therefore, it can be um, any varying. So, you will have to tune it based on observation, but then uh, why is uh, so you can see now if it works for me it does not mean it is going to work for you because mine my k value can be 0.4 and your k value can be 0.6. So, somehow you need an algorithm which will dynamically adjust the k value such that this stride length estimation is uh, very very accurate ok. Now, a min is the minimum point when compared to min 1 uh, a, a, a underscore min is the minimum point when compared to min 1 and min 2 of the stride and therefore, you have to take the minimum of min 1 and min 2 and use one of them uh, for the purpose of stride length estimation. So, step count I mentioned to you is quite simple you could get uh, by just counting the peaks. Orientation is another issue because you, when you talk about a building you are not just all the time walking straight, but you are also turning uh, inside buildings it can be sometimes uh, a 45 degree turn, but often it is a 90 degree turn. So, orientation you need to get and uh, you could use magnetometer quite effectively is capable of detecting fluctuations and uh, you could combine uh, the accelerometer data with magnetometer data in order to arrive at um, the, uh, the orientation of the uh, of a person how uh, as and when he is trying to reach the designated location or trying to evacuate from within a building ok. So, that can be very effectively used. You can see that each mode has its own uh, signatures that you will get. Um, we also said that the you need algorithms for mode recognition. Uh, in any case, I am just showing you some data here. These are step detected in texting mode. Um, again, the x axis is time, y axis is acceleration. Number of steps taken is 20, number of peaks detected is also 20. Now, there are as I mentioned to you other challenges uh, which are associated with uh, uh, IMU based uh, localization. Um, you need to look at suitable filter I mentioned to you that you should try octave or matlab to apply to be applied on raw data left hand right hand you need an algorithm false steps have to be removed uh, sometimes uh, shaking sometimes uh, some other issues may come which you will have to remove false steps um, and in the case of running and jogging this phone will move randomly uh, right in all uh, unevenly in all directions plenty of it is noise you have to defect you have to effectively detect uh, what is data from this noise and filter it orientation will have to be taken care and uh, shake in the phone must be eliminated because in the event of a fire or uh, any one of those catastrophic events humans end up shaking uh, without their own knowledge they may be shaking. So, that phone shakes will have to be removed. So, that is in brief all what I wanted to tell you about building an application. What we will do now is we will start looking at each and every piece of literature 
and uh, then we will run through the code uh, of, uh, of such an application and uh, we will see how you can uh, give you some tips on how to build such applications.